Oh, but I'm an ectomorph and I added 50 pounds of muscle. It's a spectrum. You might be a three on the ectomorph scale and a five on the mesomorph scale. You can be both. Coach Greg, and today I'm gonna to be tackling the topic of how to most effectively train based on your somatotype or body type, okay? I'm gonna get into it, dispel some of the myths, explain why some of you guys are morons that think that it's not true, that there's no such thing as body types, and at the end of the video, you will understand what is a body type, what is my body type, how does it apply to me, and how should I train? So pay attention and follow the entire video till the end and don't write a stupid comment to start with if there's a thing it's a metal type. Yes, there is. I'll prove it to you. You guys, you don't know. I have a master's degree in kinesiology. Study this, understand this. We'll give you examples, simple to understand. And trust me, I've taught this to junior high school students and they get it. Most of you are as smart as junior high students who watch this channel. So stay tuned. Let's get right into it. To first start, we need to understand what are the three body types that were being described here. The first one is an ectomorph. An ectomorph is somebody who has like a smaller bone structure. Small bones, small wrists, elbows, knees, more slender build. These people typically have a harder time packing on a huge amount of muscle. We could call them more hard gainers, as in they're not going to expect to gain a tremendous amount of muscle compared to other somatotypes. The next somatotype, mesomorph. That's the best one. Best if you're a bodybuilder, not the best if you're a bike racer or a marathon runner. So mesomorphs, these guys have a little bit bigger bone structures. They have an easy propensity to pack on muscle. They're the most likely to become an open class professional bodybuilder. They are more likely to be classified as an easy gainer. Notice, more likely to. Just because you're an ectomorph doesn't mean you can't build muscle. Just because you're a mesomorph does not mean you're going to look like Ronnie Coleman or even like me. The next is an endomorph. Easy to gain fat. Likely born with double or triple the fat cells of the average person. More fat cells, more hunger, your body wants to be bigger, they're more likely to become obese or morbidly obese, or frankly, freaking fat, hugely fat, okay? Now, remember this, because this is where I think people are confused and why they argue with me like morons that they, they think there's no such thing. This is what it is. We're all on a spectrum of all three of these. It's not like, oh, I'm ectomorph. What are you? Oh, I'm mesomorph. No, you can be a bit of both. It's on a spectrum. So if I had to rate it on a scale of one to 10, for example, I personally, when I was tested, was around a three or a four for ectomorph. So I'm a little bit on the ectomorph side, not a lot. When they tested me for mesomorph, I was around a seven on 10. That's pretty good. Yeah, so I put on muscle easier than most people. Not easier than everybody, but pretty damn good. Endomorph, I was around a three or a four. That's good. That means I put on fat easier than others. Does it mean I can't get fat? No, I'm a three or a four. If I was a one, man, it'd be even harder to gain fat. I could get fat. I try to get fat. I force fed myself for months and months on end. I got to a maximum weight of 236 pounds in the night after being stuffed. 232 morning weight. That's me getting as fat as I humanly can with anabolics. That's trying. My goal is to get to at least 240. Could not do it. Tried. Ate junk. Ate calories. High calorie dense foods. Avoided vegetables and fruit. Tried to get in as much calories as I can. Would throw up in the middle of the night. My body did not want to get any fatter. I was in the 20 something percent fat range. I wasn't even 30% body fat. I wasn't even morbidly obese, okay? Compare that to an endomorph. 
There's a TV show. They're all 600 and something pounds and they're getting surgeries to try to get their stomach stapled and whatnot, gastric, whatever. They're trying to lose weight. They have to lose like 50 pounds in a month and they try and they can't and then some do and they gain weight easily. Now, does that mean that if they like, they can't lose weight? No, if they eat 1500 calories a day, they wouldn't be 600 pounds, plain and simple. But their bodies have so many fat cells that they are so easy to get fat. Think of it, 600 pounds. Some of them weighed 800. I don't care what you say. It's not because they're lazy. Sure, they probably are. It's probably not because they're just eating like crap. Sure, they probably are. But even if they exercise and ate healthy, they still have a propensity to become morbidly, as in life-threatening obesity. They're born like that. So you can't look at somebody that's 400 pounds, 500 pounds, and judge them and say, oh, look at that person, they're 500 pounds. They're fat, lazy, and eat like crap and eat chips. No, they might be, but no. If I copied their diet and tried to eat what they did, I would not get as fat as them. Even if I never touched a weight in my life, even if I sat in a couch all day, tried to get fat, they would pay me one billion, billion dollars. Greg, if you can get your body weight to 400 pounds at any time in the next 10 years, doesn't matter how, try. One billion dollars goes to you. I could not do it for a billion trillion dollars. For If I could save the world of cancer, I could fix all starvation, I could cure the planet, I wouldn't be able to do it if I got to 400 pounds. I'd have 7 billion people cheering Greg on. Greg, get to 400 pounds. You'll have, you'll cure all the earth's diseases, hunger, everything. We'll all live for a thousand years. They're cheering me. They're sending me Pop-Tarts for free. Ella, I'm trying, I'm like, I'm trying guys. I'm gonna do it. I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Why? I don't have enough fat cells. I'm not born that way. Couldn't do it. Somebody else, I'll do it. Four donuts later, I'm there. This was easy. Can I go for 800 pounds? I can do it. Somatotypes were born differently. Same thing. Take Mr. Ectomorph, scrawny, 125 pound guy. All you have to do is beat Greg in a bodybuilding show and you cure the world of cancer. They can't. Everyone's sending them 50 kits of GH every day. They're taking everything. It's all free. Everyone. They're the best trainers in the world. They're training. I'm like, yeah, I'm just doing my thing. They show up. I blow them out of the water. They can't get the size. Why? Somatotype. They don't have it in them. They don't have the genetics. They didn't choose their parents properly. They picked the wrong parents. They can't do it. On the other hand, Mr. Muscle Morph, Mesomorph, call him a Muscle Morph. We want you to beat Greg. We're going to give you everything. Train hard. They very well could be. Why? Somatotype. The thing that you think doesn't exist. Why do you say it doesn't exist? Well, it was invented by a, a psychologist in the 1940s to, to determine what the body type looked like. So it's just a made-up term. And it's not real. Tall. Am I tall? I'm five foot six and a quarter. No. You're all going to say Greg is short. No! I'm Coach Greg. I am not short because short is a made up term by some linguist in the early 1600s and determined short. So what? It's the term. I don't care who made it up. LeBron James is tall. Six foot eight. That's tall. Andre the Giant. Seven foot something. Tall. Made up terms, tall, short. This shirt's black. Made up term. So freaking what? How is that an argument? Next argument, people. Oh, but I'm an ectomorph and I added 50 pounds of muscle. It's a spectrum. You might be a three on the ectomorph scale and a five on the mesomorph scale. You can be both. Everyone is a little bit of each. Just like I'm nice in some ways, and I'm not nice in other ways. 
You can be that. I, intelligence, for example, math, for example, body kinesthetics or body awareness, being able to like use your body. There's different intelligences. They're good at writing stories, maybe versus science. We all have different intelligences. Maybe some people can't read a person's personality. Some people are really good at picking it up. They look at you and you talk and they know all about you. They're, they can, they're like very mentally aware of how you speak. It's different intelligences. I am gifted in math. I'm gifted in other things. I'm horrible at technology. Horrible. So is my mom. It's genetic. I have no genetics for technology. It's something we're born with. Same as our body types. We're born. Hard gainer, easy gainer. It's true. I can give everyone the same supplements, the same coaching, the same diet, the same training. We all go work out. We train for 10 years. One of us puts on 50 pounds of muscle. The other put on 20. It's just the way it is. Some of us have different body types. It's going to make it different. So let's now look into how should you train based on your body type? Okay. Let's start with skinny fat. What the frig is skinny fat? It's a made up term so it doesn't exist. No, it exists. You're skinny as in you look skinny, but you're fat. So you have 12 inch biceps, but when you pinch it, it's all fat. There's no muscle underneath. Skinny fat, no muscle, but they're full of fat. They're so skinny that they don't really look fat. Like it's not like they're hanging off of each other. There's no fat hanging off their bodies. They're skinny fat. So what do you do in the gym when you train? You train the same way as if you're not skinny fat. Exactly the same. What if you're a mesomorph? Exactly the same. What if you're an endomorph? Exactly the same. Whatever body type you are, you gain muscle the same exact way. What did you think I was gonna say? Oh, you're skinny fat, so you should do reps of 20? And if you're a mesomorph, you should do reps of five? You should avoid time under tension of over 30 seconds if you're a certain body type. And if you're not, you need a minute of time under tension. And if you're an easy gainer, you need to do uh, RP of six versus eight if you're a hard No, it's the same freaking way. Man, these people are stupid. Stupid the same so what do you do you follow every single freaking thing stinking little every single thing that a person does to gain weight optimally wow how do i do that though watch all my other stupid videos they're either stupid or educational one of the two so you train hard how hard harder than yesterday harder than last time why because 95 percent of people don't train hard enough maybe 99 percent well, I don't overtrain. No, hardly anyone ever trains. Oh, but I'm natural. Don't matter. Harder than last time. Most people train like pussy cats. I had pneumonia and I took a deload week because I had pneumonia and was very sick. And I went into the gym and trained and I looked around. What are people doing? I'm training like really low intensity for me. I'm training harder than every single people person in the gym. On my deload week, training which what I consider is like pussycat training. I'm like, man, I only did half my sets to failure and beyond. A lot of them, I was like, man, I can't even go to fail. I'm like too tired. Oh, I can't. I just going through the motions. I'm like, ah, oh, I'll only do five four reps here. I'll only do five parcels at the end when I can't do it. I'm like, ah, half, I can just, I'm going to do less volume. I, ha I can't, I just can't mentally get into it. I'm just, no, I'm sick. I'm coughing up a lung between sets. And I'm still training harder than most people. Why do you think I have the results that I do? Oh, well, it's clear, PDs. Of course, Greg, it's all the stuff you take. Oh, it's so much stuff you take. Didn't take anything till I was in my 30s. What did I achieve naturally? I was in the 170 pounds of muscle. Fat-free mass index, I blew it out of the water. According to the fat-free mass index, I am an impossible outlier. I don't exist. Couldn't have been achieved. According to some studies online, oh, it's 
Uh huh. You're hiding centimeters. Minus 100. That's the most you can be at 6% body fat. Okay, so I'm 168 minus 100, so 68 kilograms. So the most I can be natural is 149 pounds. I can only be 149 pounds natural because some stupid moron wrote it on the net and half of you subs read that stupid moron's comment and because it's on the net, then it typed Wikipedia, whatever, you think it's real. I'm going to have to start publishing some stupid articles on the net, make some stuff up, put it on, and you read, well, it's written on the net. doesn't matter if it's right or not. Stupid. 149 pounds at five foot six? Come on. That's as much as you guys think you can build natural. I mean, if you're a pure ectomorph, yeah, probably that's going to be your limit. But if you have mesomorphic tendencies and you can pack on muscle easy and you're an easy gainer like me, you know, I'm not the easiest gainer in the world. There's people who gain weight faster than me. Antoine Vaillant, Canadian. 220 pounds right now and six foot tall. He's a freak. At 21 years old, he's 245 pounds of muscle. Freak genetics. Pure mesomorph. Maybe has some endo in him because he can get a little bit chubby. But I bet you if you gave him a million dollars, billion dollars, he can't get to 500 pounds. I don't care how much he, you feed him. I don't care how much he doesn't move around and just eats friggin' a pound of butter in a sandwich. It's not going to get him that fat. He just can't. You know, and other people are 500 pounds and they're struggling. They're hungry and they're 500 pounds. Most people are not hungry when they're 500 pounds. You get to that point, you're like, oh my God, I can't eat anymore. Okay? So you train the same way, no matter what your body type is. And based on your genetics, that will determine how much muscle you can gain. That's it. Select better parents if you want more muscle. Some people are arguing with proper training and diet, if you're an ectomorph, you could still be gain muscle and so that turns you into a mesomorph and so by changing your body that proves there's no such thing as somatotype it does not prove that at all it just says that you are in fact not a pure ectomorph if you pack on muscle really easily you're not a hard gainer you can't say i'm a hard gainer but I train really smart and I did my time under tension correctly and I mixed up my workouts and I ate salmon every day and nuts and I trained and slept properly. And so I turned my hard gainer genetics into easy gainer genetics. No, you didn't. You were an easy gainer to start with and optimized it by training and eating properly. We all can optimize things. If you go to the gym and train like a pussy, you eat like crap, you don't sleep, you don't recover, you don't train hard, blah, blah, blah. You're not going to get the same results as if you do everything properly. If you intermittent fast and you only eat one meal a day and you don't eat enough protein or you break your fast with a rice crispy square and you eat chocolate before bed and drink wine all the time or if you do recreational drugs, you're not going to make the same gains or not even going that crazy. I just did a Zwift bike race and I did one a few days ago and I trained legs and upper body yesterday. That is going to hurt my muscle building gains. You can't optimize cardiovascular training and weightlifting at the same time and make the same progress in both. If you do and you're a beginner, you're gonna make less progress on cardio and less progress on muscle building, but you'll gain both, maybe at 50% rate of both because you're overtraining. You can't just ride your bike 10 hours a week hard and train with weights 10 hours a week hard and make the same gains in muscle mass as if you just weight lift or the same gains in cardiovascular fitness and recovery and improved performance in racing, you know, as if you didn't do all that weights and just did the bike. Just think, I can't train legs twice a week really hard and then five days a week do legs really hard on a bike and expect my muscles to recover from the biking and the squatting and what have you. It's just not going to happen. So that's training. Whatever your body type is, you do the same thing. You do not, because you're overweight, do not, I repeat, do not. Got it? Do not 
Change your rep scheme. Do not think, oh, I need to rest less between sets so I can burn off more calories. I need to do more higher reps to burn off more calories. Weightlifting is not to burn calories. Weightlifting hardly burns any calories. I already did a video on it. Average person is going to burn one to 400 calories in a gym session to lifting weights. You're not in there to burn calories. You're in there to build muscle. Cardio burns the calories. What kind? Low intensity slash moderate intensity, depending on how fit you are. If you're an endomorph, if you're 400 pounds, you're not going to be running on the treadmill. Walking slowly is going to be hard. You're carrying 400 pounds, okay? Depending on your fitness level, that's where you're going to go. What do you do? Moderate for you. Whatever pace you do, you should feel like you could do for, say, two hours, but only go, like, half that time. So if you're going so hard that at the end of it, you're, like, dead, it's too hard. You can't recover from that. Don't need to do that unless you're an athlete training for a sport, you know, soccer star, whatever. That's different. Now, if you're a pure muscle morph, don't think, oh, I need to train low reps, heavy weights, because that builds more muscle. No, it's the same for everyone. Do not think that, oh, because I'm leaner, I better do low reps. I actually had people write in and ask that. Oh, I do low reps because I don't want to burn off too many calories. That time under tension, 40 seconds, that's more reps, 15 reps, you're burning too many calories. No, it's not. It's hardly any different. Okay. An ectomorph. Don't be like, oh, I need to train different. I need to train more often or less often or rest more between sets. It's all the same. What's the main difference between these three body types? It's not in the gym. It's in the kitchen. If you're an endomorph and you're obese, you need to eat less calories than you're currently eating because you're obese. You need a calorie deficit. And yes, if you're obese, you will build muscle in a deficit, the same as if you're in a surplus. No difference. If you're an ectomorph, no fat on your body at all, shredded everywhere, skinny, six foot 120. Eat more, have a surplus, put on a little bit of body fat. You're too skinny. You need some more calories. Doesn't change how you train. It changes how much calories go into your mouth. You need a surplus. If somebody hires me at 6% body fat, six foot tall, 125 pounds, I'm not gonna put them on a low calorie diet and try to get them to be leaner. No, that makes no sense. And if you're a pure mesomorph and you're at a good body fat percentage, eat the same as you're eating, the same calories. No, you don't need to add 500 calories or 1,000 calories or bulk up to put on muscle. You're a mesomorph, easy gainer, and you're at a good body fat percent, then don't eat more. If you're a mesomorph and you've been force feeding forever and you're at 30% body fat, get into a calorie deficit. Just because you're a mesomorph doesn't mean you need to force feed. Get to your ideal fat percent that gives you the energy to train hard in the gym, feel good, and have like the best workouts. 15% might be that number. It might be 10, it might be 20. We don't know what it is. It's all different for everyone. You will know. If you're in the gym and you have no energy doing your weightlifting, or if you're weak, or you're going hypo, you know you're not eating enough. It's simple, okay? If you have 5% body fat and everyone's like, holy cow, look at your glute striations, you probably need to eat more. You'll probably build more muscle. It depends on the person, okay? So the diet is different in just in that if you're super skinny, eat a bit more. If you're fat and overweight, eat a little bit less. If you're at a good body fat percentage, continue to do what you're doing. Okay, subscribe, click on subscribe and then bell button it. It goes right up right quick. Subscribe bell, boom, swoosh, you get notified. And as soon as videos like this come out, you can watch them right away and be like, first comment, boom, and you're the champion of commenters. Write comments, but please stop being idiots, okay? What, at least, if you're gonna be an idiot, at least watch the entire video because you might learn something and not post a stupid comment. Instead of being like, Greg, you're so wrong, you don't know. You might be like, oh man, I was gonna write that you didn't know, but at the end of the video, it all made sense. Thank God, do that. Doesn't that make more sense? Anyway, watch one of these videos right here, how to train properly, because that's what you watch this video based on your somatotype. Watch how to train, how to train again. I have different training videos related to how to train, how to build muscle hypertrophy. Watch them. GregDuset.com, website, hire me for coaching. Greg Duset IFPB Pro, Instagram. Watch me, follow me there, make comments. Until next time, I am out.